Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. As we gather together this day, it is a day set apart. It is known as a festival of transfiguration. It actually is set right in the middle from the Advent, Christmas, Epiphany season, here we are, into then the Lenten and the fullness of Easter. So it's that pinnacle, if you will, um, in the church year. Uh, How wonderful that we can explore today a bit about mountaintop experiences uh, before we think of what Jesus headed into to Jerusalem. And so we remember this as we celebrate today. Uh, Please know that what a joy to set apart this Sunday, uh, receiving two new members, Shirley Hummel, and Will Robbins. There's Will and there's Shirley. (laughs) Great. Um, As we do that, the whole community of believers is welcome to remember our baptismal covenant, to continue to renew our commitments in Christ as well. There'll be a light reception following today, so please, if you're able, please stay and join in that time. As already mentioned a little bit, uh, this coming Wednesday begins the Lenten season, Ash Wednesday. Uh, We join together with several other churches, with St. James Lutheran and with the Presbyterian Church here in Huntingdon. Uh, We will gather at 7 p.m. at St. James, and uh, there is a a joint choir. We're thankful that that's going to come together. I believe the choir's asked to be there about 6.30, is that right? Yes. And uh, there will be communion, Uh, there will be grape juice available as well as wine, and that will be able to be distinguished well. Um, That's Pastor Brandon had mentioned that to me. Also, imposition of ashes, and both of those are the choice of those who gather. But please come out if you can as we share in this beginning of the Lenten season. Feel free to wear a mask if you so choose, as it might be a little bit of a larger uh, crowd since it's three churches together. Uh, That is your your option. Uh, Let me ask, uh, I believe there are some other announcements. Good morning. Just a couple of missions announcements. Um, First of all, I want to remind everyone that this coming Thursday is our first opportunity to be serving at the Hometown Hearts Soup Kitchen. Um, And I appreciate everyone who has signed up so far to volunteer as cooks, serving, cleanup, and also most especially our bakers in in the group, as well as I did receive some donations towards baked goods. However, we will continue to welcome all hands that want to come and prepare food uh, or want to donate baked goods. Um, As I mentioned last week, we have about 130 to 140 persons that we need uh, serving uh, dessert servings for, which is quite quite a lot of uh, cake and pies and other goodies. Um, So, if you're able to join us um, and and or contribute to that process, please come. We have a wonderful time. Um, Doors will be open as early as 3.30. They're still serving, or I'm sorry, as early as 3 o'clock. They're still serving by takeout. Um, There was a a switch in in that process in that uh, now they're trying to serve um, the the ones that come on site uh, with their takeout meals first and then the the ones that are delivered um, as I understand it. So um, there again, please uh, feel free to join us and help in that process. Um, the second missions announcement that I have concerns, of course, international disaster relief as we continue to hear of the rising death toll and the ongoing devastation in Turkey and Syria from the earthquake. I wanted to share an option for those who wish to contribute um, to the relief and emergency response efforts. Um, Available is information as well, and this this is where this comes from, on the UCC website um, at ucc.org, global-h-o-p-e, global hope. Um, UCC has God is Still Speaking, Global Hope, which is the uh, branch of our church's wider mission. So when you see the OCWM envelopes, 
that we take up a special offering for several times throughout the year. This is part of what you are giving to. Um, that Global Hope is responsible for refugee, migration, and disaster response ministries through the United Church of Christ. Um, and there is more information about Global Hope, but they are they have added to the website um, specific to the disaster response in Turkey and Syria, and there are already individuals and funds being deployed at the border and designated. What we, what we are able to do is make donations to the International Emergency Fund as part of Global Hope, and in order to ensure that they are dedicated to the Turkey and Syria, you just need to designate that they are for the Turkey-Syria earthquake response. We have a couple of options for those of you who like to take advantage of text messaging. You can text UCC disaster to 41444. Um, again, that's UCC disaster to 41444. If you prefer to mail a check, you can mail checks payable to the United Church of Christ to the main office at post office box 71957, Cleveland, Ohio, 44194, and just mark Turkey and Syria in the memo section of your check. Also, if you like, if you prefer to just send a donation here to the church or drop something in the offering plates, if you mark that you're, um, you want that donation to go to the Turkey and Syria earthquake response, we will make sure that those funds are collected and sent into the national church as part of uh, the international Turkey and Syria earthquake response. Um, and all of this information will be forthcoming in bulletin. I imagine we'll have it in written form in upcoming announcements. Um, but again, it's also available at the UCC National Church website for your reference. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Are there any other announcements that we have at this point? Remember, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ. We worship together this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please rise and join in the call to worship. The Holy One is our sovereign. Let us praise God's great and awesome name. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established fairness among us. Trusting in God's steadfast love, together let us confess our sin. Glorious God, you are all wisdom and a lamp to our feet, yet we fail to listen to you and neglect to follow your guidance. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us on, that we may walk in your ways and be happy in your refuge. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The good news of our faith is this. If we call upon God, we will be answered and forgiven. That promise gives us peace and joy let us share that peace and joy in Christ with one another.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God, To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come down for you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud, Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Our second scripture reading is Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy is he. 
Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of a cloud. They kept his decrees and the statues that he gave them. He, that he gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew from the 17th chapter. It was six days later, and Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. A voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on the ground and were overcome with great fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about this vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before we move into the message, I also want to extend a huge welcome, an Abbey welcome to those who are here, not only those becoming new members, but will your family Olivia and little Aeneas, and he might be back with the others now. Okay, okay. And for others who are here, welcome. It's good to see um, new faces and the familiar faces of the Abbey family together. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, who is our strength, and our very life. Amen. So, in climbing a mountain, and especially in trying to get to the top, we know that it can be exhausting, but also exhilarating at the same time. We might see the view of the mountain as we stand before it, be overwhelmed by it. It is quite intimidating, figuratively or literally speaking. Taking that first step is usually the one that takes the most courage as we begin. Just starting out, just getting in motion to say, yes, I'm, I'm going to do this. It helps to have a trusted friend or friends alongside. Taking our steps along the way, we notice more details as we go. I know there's many who are some hikers in here, but you know, those details might be the leaves that are so intricate. It might be the blossoms that are just beginning to open up, or not yet. It might be the bark on the trees and the sunlight as it comes into the pathway, how it shows forth in different ways and dances. 
the wildlife, the insects, hopefully there's some repellent if needed, the pond creatures are all a part of the mountain trail experience. Maybe with streams of fresh water meandering along. That's great water. And we check in with ourselves and with others as we stop, as we breathe, and we just be in the midst of the trail. Yes, the trail of life as well. I wanted to share with you briefly, though, late in January, it was now several weeks ago, almost a month ago, a few of us took the Alan Seeger Nature Trail. And it's only several miles down the road from that wonderful bed and breakfast Studebaker house. And this trail is not up a mountain, yet it was one of the most spectacular that I've traveled. Maybe some who took that trail with us um, can remember. There were spectacular canopies of rhododendrons tunneling through that trail. And we walked along hand-built bridges that are there, passing over streams. We were thankful that there were warmer temper temperatures that Saturday in January. Yet, this is a definite trail to take for the springtime coming in our local area. It's not far from here. So put that on your calendar some, some time for the spring. It is today that we focus on mountain trails, making sure to hydrate and pace oneself with friends along the way. The view opens almost a bird's eye view. The perspective that is gained in such a mountaintop view is such a gift. It can add so much to our daily journey, our daily routines and rhythms. Having such experiences, we can embrace those experiences and take what we learn and what we process there so that it allows us to enter that change into our lives, that great pause that is needed, that God brings into our lives. Some have said the beauty of a mountaintop never fades because it's always active. Once we're up there, we see the changes, the rain clouds in one section and the bright sun in another place. There, it's not just all rain or all sunshine. It's mixed together, spectacular rays of light coming through. I also hope that Jim and Shirley don't mind me saying the view from their home has this type of panoramic view. It is awe-striking. So here we are. Imagine amidst the mountains. And that's where Jesus took with him James and John and Peter. They journeyed together. Jesus had been trying to help them perceive something more about the coming future. As soon as he would then be heading to Jerusalem. So the scripture tells us that six days earlier, Jesus was telling them of his suffering, of his death. And then his rising to life. But he wanted his closest friends, his family, his people to know and be aware what was soon to take place. Maybe not all the details, but just to know this is coming. They had been giving their lives to mission, to learning of disciplined prayer, to seeing inner, to seeking and seeing Jesus interacting with healing and teaching. There were great crowds that came around, and then there were individuals that Jesus met with. Also, how Jesus dealt with the ridicule that came along his journey. Now, here they are, and Jesus brings them to this mountain. And somehow, the past is melded with the present. They would eventually sustain their futures. For we hear that Jesus, as he was with them, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Well, there's Peter stepping out. He says, you know, let's make a home for them right here. 
He was being very hospitable, I believe. He said, let's pitch a tent, one for you, Jesus, and one for Moses. We won't be crowded in one tent. And one for Elijah. Yet he was missing the point here. Peter was interrupted and overshadowed with this great cloud. It was a bright cloud. And those words spoken, this is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. They didn't know what was going on, but Jesus had been trying to help them understand. And so in the midst, they continued to hear this voice and they were frightened. They fell to the ground because fear can do that. Fear can just overtake us and cause us to fall. And yet Jesus came to them and touched them and opened their eyes. And seeing only him, they were able to stand. The verse tells us that Jesus came and touched them saying, get up, do not be afraid. They raised their eyes and they saw just Jesus then. This vision was to sustain them, to keep them going. Their fears might grip them at times along the way. That journey ahead was there. It was like a mountain before them. Yet this particular mountaintop experience would keep them going. In fact, what they were going to was more of the deepest valley than they experienced. As they traveled down the mountain together, Jesus said to them, tell no one, tell no one of this vision until after I am raised. So for now, they had in their hearts and their minds that vision. So what about us today? Can we trust that God is with us in our daily lives, even if we are experiencing and we know others experiencing deep valleys in life? I can't help but get, you know, we hear of that earthquake and still how people are trying to survive in the midst of Turkey and Syria. In Ukraine, we're so close within our global community these days. I also hear of a cyclone in New Zealand, still looking for thousands recently. But our life too, we sometimes feel you know, if something happens or overtakes us, we know, wow, this catches us in the midst. But there are times where we walk along and we are sensing God's presence in a clear way. And other times where we do not sense that presence so clearly. God wants us to know that we can be sustained within our past and our present as we look into the future of what God has promised and that there are experiences that we have that can sustain. For Moses, we hear in Exodus, and for those three with Jesus, there was a time set apart. The holy ground, if you will, they were set apart. Today, amidst our congregation here at the Abbey, Shirley and Will are set apart. Their families gathered here. But these two are today joining the Abbey community of faith by their affirmation of their commitment in Christ through what Christ has done through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in the midst of remembering our baptism. Today, we as a community of faith can remember our own commitment in Christ. God has with us, continuing to name and claim us as the sons and daughters of the living God. We are washed in waters of forgiveness and grace. We continue to prepare for that road ahead this particular Sunday. It's about saying yes to what God has already said yes to in our life, agreeing with God, and then saying no to the things that steer us away from the center. To be able to know that God has the best for us and for our neighbors, and that we join together in the midst of what God is offering. 
This life certainly has difficulties and challenges. And we meet the days with God's vision that sustains us. We can shift our perspective that helps us greatly in difficult times. So in this festival Sunday, amidst the, the cycle of Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, leading then into the Lenten journey, let us prepare ourselves to receive that goodness and grace of God, the provision provided, and renewal as we soon enter into the Lenten season. I'd like to share with you from Becca Stevens' uh, words, just a little, a little reflection on the mountaintop as it is mentioned both in Exodus today and in Matthew. The storm is brewing in a mountaintop. Clouds can become the stage for even a lightning dance. Thunder rolls in the distant heaven, soaring above predators that scan the meadows. For the most vulnerable prey they look. I too am searching, searching the horizon for a thought, for a prayer. Moses saw God alongside hawks gliding on updrafts, carrying lofty thoughts, where longings are there in inspiration. Mountaintops roar with power born from the depths of the sea. They are survivors. They are full of life. We climb their stoic backs, hoping like the hawks and Moses, as Jesus went up with Peter, James, and John, to see the dreams that are there, to be sustained even in our weariness, to know that there is hope as we go into the valleys. God is present, and there is goodness and grace. Even in the most hopeless situations, we trust in this God and from what God has given us in the mission and the vision that's provided. Amen. Together we share in the prayers. Please know um, I will respond. Lord, in your mercy, you're welcome to respond here our prayer. Call together to follow you, Lord. We pray for your family, the church across the globe, for this world and for all in need. Embolden us, Lord. May we witness to your holiness, your majesty, and your mercy. Move us even from mountaintops into valleys and valleys into mountaintops. Continue to help us to share of your faithfulness, your forgiveness, and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, dwell with your whole creation from that tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation org organizations. Protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world. Lord, we especially lift to you those in Turkey and in Syria. We lift to you those in New Zealand and those who are in the midst of conflict as well. Bring your sustenance and your peace, even that passes all understanding, and great aid to those areas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, guide and give wisdom to those who are in authority, both locally, nationally, and internationally. We pray for our governor and state legislatures and our president, national legislatures, slaters, and Lord, those who are in the midst of the nations, as you are the God of all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we ask that you give shelter. You are the one who provides for those even who are lacking self safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. 
Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany those who are homebound, those who are sick or isolated. Lord, we thank you for those that we have amidst our hearts and prayers because you have put them there. We ask that we would respond in intercessory prayer. We thank you for all on our prayer list and trust your loving care to intervene on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, make us eager to receive your word that comes to us. Help us to recognize Jesus' voice in the needs around us of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow even in the way of the cross that leads to new life. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who extends grace, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we do ask that you receive our thanksgiving for those who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even in the midst of people that we didn't think would share your good news, that they have made a difference in our lives. For our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage and to continue to be about your work in the midst of our days, in this day that you're calling us to be about your ministry, your life, your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we do bring our needs and hopes to you, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ, crucified and risen. Amen. We pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is with great joy at this time that we invite those to come forward who wish to affirm their baptism by uniting with the Abbey here in this household of faith. Um, We invite Shirley Hummel to come forward and William Robbins. Both of these uh, wonderful persons (laughs) have come to us and they have given letters of transfer from where they were active at one time within ministry uh, and other households of faith. So it is great to have you here. Surely we have (laughs) waited for a while. And in the midst, we are so grateful, Jim, that you are doing so well in your healing process. Uh, That's why Shirley couldn't join the Abbey uh, back in, what, 2021, December 2021, along with Angela. So let's give thanks to God for your healing there. I am so grateful. You shared a little bit with me yesterday about um, that journey, and uh, we're just grateful he got out of the hospital and was able to continue in the things that you have your commitments with. That is so wonderful. And also, Will uh, is familiar with many of you, and uh, he will be, I like to say that Will keeps it, (laughs) will be here August 1st. Um, I'm going to let both of them, and and they have a time to share afterwards as we share in membership, but uh, they might share a little bit more about their journey uh, as much as you want to. Don't feel obligated to do that, okay? So it is together here, friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. The church is God's family connecting together through Christ. These folks have found nurture and support in the midst of this family of faith in Christ. 
Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism, to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. As they are here for service to Jesus Christ, using their gifts, which the Holy Spirit has given. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So I ask you, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith in the family of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Amen. Do you renounce the powers of evil the desi and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? I promise with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. I promise with the help of God. All who are able may stand as we unite with the Church in all times and places, we confess our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe, I believe in God. God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. And now we are turning to the statement of faith that was approved uh, within the United Church of Christ. And we will share this as a form also of the creed. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins, fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Amen. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith that has brought you to this time and this place. 
We give you thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home. We celebrate your presence in this household of God. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves the community and the world? I promise with the help of God. Let us, members of the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. Together we share. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Let us share in applause, giving thanks to God for them. We do. You may be seated at this time if you do. Um, you are welcome to share a word not necessary. We'll ask you first shortly. You don't have to. No. You okay? Yeah, I think I'm probably. Oh, you want to yell. Okay. She wants to acknowledge. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't want to say a lot. I wasn't going to say anything. But I feel the need to say that I think. It was God's plan that I couldn't join December over a year ago. Uh, this past year, most of you know, has been a pretty big struggle for, for us, and it has reaffirmed my faith a lot and has made me realize that it's all in God's timing. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a big revelation for me. It, good things come, but it's in God's timing, not, not ours. That's wonderful. Thank you Thank so you. much. What a beautiful statement here. Thank you. Sir. Would you like this or no? We'll try it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be as loud as Shirley. <laughs> you can outspeak me. Oh, friends, it's good to be with you this morning um, and share this time of worship. Um, I, I was not part of the planning of this service in terms of like choosing the music, but... I think God is in it. The songs that you chose are songs from my childhood and my youth. Um, and they reminded me of my own faith journey. And you guys have just now brought me right here. And this is the next stop in the journey. My name is Will Robbins. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, originally. I'm here with my wife, Olivia Grugan, originally from Alexandria, just down the road. And my son, he's two. Aeneas, he's back there playing with trucks and tractors and all kinds of things. <laughs> Thank you for, for providing that today. Um, but why am I here? What's been my journey? How am I here before you? Well, it starts because of my parents. I was raised in the Baptist church and I was baptized when I was six years old in 1992. My parents are watching somewhere up there, out there. Because of my parents, because of their faithfulness, because of my grandparents, because of their faithfulness. And maybe some of you are sitting here for that same reason. I'm here because of the church. I'm not just talking about the Abbey, but I'm talking about the church universal. I'm talking about all those who I've met in my 37 years who have poured into my life, who have believed in me and supported me. I'm talking about Sunday school teachers. I'm talking about members of the choir. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about friends. All these people along the way have encouraged me to this moment. And friends, I want you to know that I'm in the church today because of Jesus Christ. Because there is no one else who I've ever met in my life, who is so compelling, so inspiring. There's no one else I'd rather follow than Jesus. And that's why I'm here with you today. But I'm also here at the Abbey. I'm not just at any church, I'm here at the Abbey. So why am I standing here? 
well, I'm here because of Carol Winner. <laughs> and she does. She deserves it. She does. I'm here because Carol uh, took a chance. She took a chance and sent me an email. I'm here because of a pastoral search committee who is faithful and dedicated, who asked great questions, who asked hard questions. And I'm here because I connected with that committee. And I believe that by connecting with that committee, I was going to connect with each and every one of you. I'm here because of my wife, because of her love and support. I'm here because of my son, Aeneas, because he believes in Pastor Papa. <laughs> so I'm here because of you, the church, the Abbey, I'm here because of Huntington, because my wife and I, our family, have a heart for this town. We believe in this town. We believe in this church. We believe in the Abbey. And I want to walk with you. I'm happy to be celebrating my role as your next pastor in August. But right now, I want to lift up this time as being a member, as being one of you, as being here in the pews. I'm going to go ahead and ask a special request. My family is going on a trip to Guatemala and will be gone for six weeks. So if you're wondering, wait, wait, he just joined. Why is he not here? <laughs> we'll be gone for a little while, and we ask for your prayers uh, during the six weeks that we are away. And then in the summertime, you will see us more often. And I look forward to the ways that in which we can share our lives together. So thank you, friends. I thank you that you and I have something to share together. Thank you, Pastor Morelli, and all those who put this service together. Thank you, Shirley, for sharing this space. All right. Look forward to meeting you downstairs. <laughs> thank you so much, Well, We give thanks uh, for Well, and let me give you this we particular Great. We got it. This certificate from the Abbey. And we'll close uh, this portion. Uh, just remembering that in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of the Abbey, we extend to you a hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the family of God in this local church here at the Abbey. Let us pray again. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people, for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending these believers to us that we may walk and work together in serving the needs of others. Confirm in us the power of your covenant that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind which was in Christ Jesus, to whom be all glory and honor. Let us together share. Amen. 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 Thank you. Blessings. We've reached the time in our service where once again, we just remind you of the many ways that you can share in the mission and the joy with our invitation to give. Um, offering plates at, can be found at the entrance of the sanctuary, uh, each entrance, or offerings can be dropped by the local church on the slot nearest the door on Moore and Sixth Streets. Checks can be mailed or you can give electronically on the Abbey's website. Uh, today is also a day where we collect for the local food pantry, um, either by donations of food or if you prefer monetary offerings, which we often convert to uh, gift cards, which have the benefit of giving both back to the Abbey as well as allowing the food pantry to stock their shelves with what they most need. Um, and once again, we thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving both to the church and the broader community. Join me in our prayer of dedication of gifts and self. God of mountaintops and valleys, our vision of you clouded or brilliantly clear, we faithfully add our gifts to those being given all around us. Bless these offerings that they may be transfigured into your presence in the world. Amen.
Christ has been revealed to us that we might follow him and transform the world through his word. Let us go in love and work for peace. May the self-revealing God be a lamp on your way as the day dawns and rises within you.